I found the top 10 teachers in all of Star Wars, and in this video, I'm going to rank them all from the absolute best to the absolute worst. So without further ado, let's get into it. At number 10, as the absolute best mentor in all of Star Wars is Count Dooku. Now, whoa, 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 don't click off yet. I understand that that's probably not what you expected to hear, but just give me a chance to explain. The way that I'm going to be making this list is by deciding how much I'd want each individual character to be my mentor. And when I line up every mentor in Star Wars, there is literally no one else who will teach me both the light and the dark side of the Force. As a former Jedi and now a Sith, Dooku is literally the only character on this list who will teach me both sides of the equation. And unlike someone like Sidious or Yoda who may have a knowledge of both sides of the Force but will only teach me one, Dooku will show me the best of both worlds. Dooku has exclusively learned from the best of the best, being a direct Padawan of Yoda when he was a Jedi and being a direct Padawan of Sidious when he became a Sith. And unlike Sidious, Dooku is not pure evil. He's simply a man who saw the corruption in the Jedi Order and wanted no part of it. On top of everything, I know that if I was trained by Dooku, I would become an absolute menace with a lightsaber. Count Dooku is one of the most skilled swordsmen in all the galaxy, and he would take great care to ensure that I could take on anyone in a duel. And plus, on a personal level, since your boy loves a nice curved hill, Dooku is the perfect person to show me how to effectively wield one. And lastly, unlike most of the Sith in Star Wars, I don't believe that Dooku would turn on me, as long as I didn't provoke him first. And hold on, I know what you're thinking. Ah, Jedward, you swashbuckling scoundrel, you. You're forgetting that during the Clone Wars, Count Dooku betrayed Ventress. Yes, I do remember that, but that was only because Sidious forced him to. And don't worry, I'll talk about Sidious later. Dooku only ordered Ventress to be thrown away because, at the time, his relationship with Sidious was more important to him than his relationship with Ventress. When I say I want Dooku as a teacher, I mean in a perfect world and without Sidious's interference. I don't believe that on his own, Dooku would have tried to kill Ventress because he genuinely seemed to take pride in her and her skill. I don't know, I could be wrong, but that's what I think. All in all, I strongly believe that Count Dooku would be the best mentor in the galaxy. And by the way, let me mention really quickly that to qualify for this list, you have to be a major character who has mentored at least one other major character. And believe me, some of the mentors coming up on this list get pretty awful, so stick around for that. Alright, time to move on. Up next at second best is obviously Master Yoda. What can I say? This guy has got 900 years of teaching under his belt, so he better know a thing or two, and he's kind of a jack of all trades. Everybody already knows all of Yoda's famous quotes, you know, do or do not, there is no try, size matters not, which, <laughs> yikes, I really hope is true, and obviously, who could forget? It's about drive, it's about power, Zoa 30% off on Amazon for the next few hours. Truly some timeless classics. That's one thing that would be great about getting trained by Yoda. You don't just learn skills and abilities, you also learn lessons and wisdom too. But then there are the skills and abilities, which Yoda is absolutely insane at. I mean, I want to learn how to catch force lightning and do whatever this is. Those are two full-grown men, and all he did was wave his hand. That's crazy. As for lightsaber fighting, there's no question whatsoever that this guy knows what he's doing. I mean, just look at those acrobatics. There's not even that much that I can say, because everybody just already knows how cool it would be to be trained by Yoda. Coming in at the number 8 spot is Qui-Gon Jinn, and here's why Qui-Gon Jinn would be an awesome mentor. He would teach you to never trust authority. When Qui-Gon Jinn was alive, he was constantly suspicious of the Jedi Council, and he started to see the politics that the Jedi were getting mixed up in before anyone else even could. Now, granted, he did learn this from Count Dooku, who was his master, but he did try to pass this on to Obi-Wan, who unfortunately never really understood the mistrust that Qui-Gon had until it was too late. And this is not a controversial take at all. Basically, every Star Wars fan likes Qui-Gon, and unless I'm just dead wrong, I'm pretty sure that he's Star Wars Theory's favorite Jedi. As for teaching me how to use the Force and a lightsaber, Qui-Gon would be alright, I guess. I mean, when it comes to Force training, Qui-Gon would be fine, but as for lightsabers, unfortunately, Qui-Gon was born in just the wrong time, because since Sith hadn't been seen in thousands of years, the Jedi had all but stopped teaching how to do lightsaber on lightsaber combat. But at the same time, Qui-Gon was Dooku's apprentice, and he could have had the best lightsaber training in the galaxy if he'd wanted it, so he has no one to blame but himself. But I can't stress enough how important it would be to have a mentor that would do things their own way, and show me that the council isn't always right about everything. And that's why Qui-Gon Jinn is ranked at number 8 on my list. Alright, coming up as the 7th best mentor is Anakin Skywalker. The great thing about getting trained by him is that he goes above and beyond the average Jedi teachings. Sure, you'll learn how to use the Force and swing a lightsaber, but you'll also learn how to to, I don't know, survive on a Venator trapped with an army of clones who are actively trying to kill you. Yeah, stuff like that. Also, he's apparently really progressive for a Jedi. Remember that one episode in Clone Wars where Ahsoka and Barriss Offee get trapped in that catacomb on Geonosis and Luminara and Dooley is like, well, looks like they're gone. Time to get new Padawans, eh, Skywalker? And then Anakin's like, yeah, go suck on a cactus, loser. I'm gonna try to help them. My point is that Anakin would actually look out for you and try to help you as best as he could. Most Jedi aren't too good at critical thinking, but that's where Anakin excels and he would definitely teach his Padawan how to think on their feet and innovate. Plus, Ahsoka did turn out pretty good so he gets at least some credit for that. Also, I just know in advance that some of you are going to be in my comment section trying to cook me alive for not putting Darth Vader on this list because, oh, well, you know, in the Legends, Darth Vader did train Starkiller, so technically he qualifies for this list. Okay, first of all, I have played none of the Force Unleashed games and read none of the books, so I'm simply not qualified to talk about Starkiller in any way whatsoever. And second of all, if I include one piece of Legends content, I have to include all the others. And not only have I not read almost any books or comics, I just quite frankly don't want to go through every piece of Star Wars text ever created to find random 
random characters to put on this list. So that's that. Now, coming up at number six is, ah, yes, the negotiator, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Having Obi-Wan as a teacher would be really good in some ways, but at the same time, really annoying in other ways. Obi-Wan is a much more rigid person than Anakin, and during the prequels more than ever, he's very much a, oh, the Jedi said to do it this way, so that's how we're going to do it, which is good sometimes, for sure, but there are other times that I want my mentor to tell me, look, kid, this is how we're supposed to do it, but ah, screw it, let's give this other way a shot. That's why Anakin is slightly above Obi-Wan on this list, because Anakin would teach me that sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. But one area where Obi-Wan would really excel is showing me how to be witty. Holy cow, if you were hanging around with this guy for a couple years, you would have a tongue quicker than a coyote. I mean, I already think that my one-liner game is alright, but give me a few years with old Ben, and I'd be zinging people left and right. I'd be unstoppable. As for showing me how to use the Force and swing a lightsaber, Obi-Wan would probably be a pretty generic teacher. That's the thing about the Jedi and the Sith. Aside from a few notable exceptions, basically any mentor you get will be able to show you how to fight reasonably well. Like, there's not any one Force wielder on this list who's notably bad with a lightsaber, you know? Anyway, that's all to say that- Oh, and before I forget, hello there everybody, my name is Jedward, and if you're enjoying this video so far, do yourself and me a favor and smash that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Also, I make tons of content about Star Wars and other franchises like it, so go ahead and check out some more of that after you finish this video. Thank you, and now we get into some of the more, well, there's no easy way to put this, awful mentors on this list. And who else is better to put at number 5 than Darth Maul? The main reason that I think Maul would be a pretty bad mentor is because he's never really had any experience. He barely made this list as it is, and only because he took Savage under his wing, and to be completely fair, he barely even trained Savage, because Savage found him after being somewhat trained by both Ventress and Count Dooku. To top it all off, Maul was completely out of the game for more than a decade, abandoned on that weird trash world. So not only has he had very little experience as a mentor, if any at all, he also just wouldn't be as good at teaching how to use the dark side, because he himself hasn't practiced it in years. That was actually one of my biggest gripes with the Clone Wars show, was the fact that Maul came back basically from the dead and was stronger than ever before, but he was still a great character, so everyone kind of let it slide. When it comes to teaching though, I have my doubts about how good at it he would really be. However, I would still rather have him as a teacher than the next character on this list who is none other than Luke Skywalker. Now, if the Star Wars sequels had left Luke alone, then I have no idea how he'd be answering this question. But thankfully, Disney came out swinging and turned Luke into a deadbeat loser who could barely even teach a couple of students anything about the Force. And when one of his students had a couple of dark thoughts, Luke went full savage on him. The problem is that Ryan Johnson purposely wrote Luke to be a bad teacher so that he could break him down to the dirt and then show how much better Rey was. And before any of you comment anything, do not even try to tell me that Luke actually taught Rey anything. Miss Perfect over here didn't need his help, you see, because she was already so gifted in every way. In fact, she was better than him. So unfortunately, I have to say that because of the way he was written in the sequels, I don't think that he'd be a very good teacher. And heck, would you want to get taught by some grumpy old guy who hates his life and wishes he was dead? I mean, yeah, it would be awesome to get trained by Return of the Jedi Luke, and that would definitely be way higher on this list, but that's not who we have. We got Mr. Green Alien Milk over here, so thanks for that, Ryan. For number three, we have the first bounty hunter on this list, Jango Fett. Jango taught Boba a lot of what he knew before he died, and that's where Boba got his arsenal, his ship, and his armor. However, being taught by Jango, if you were anyone other than his literal son, would kind of suck because he would hang you out to dry so quick, it's not even funny. I mean, yeah, you could learn some skills, I guess, but if you look at Attack of the Clones, Jango literally chose to go kill the assassin that he sent to kill his target rather than go kill Padme himself. That's cold. But again, Jango is one of those people who's barely on this list, and it's only because he taught his 10-year-old son a thing or two. However, I'd still rather have him train me than the second to worst character on this list, who is the one and only Supreme Leader Snoke. And the reason for this? Bro, I don't even know what Snoke did. I know that he took Kylo Ren under his wing after Kylo Ren destroyed Luke's Jedi Order, but after that, I have no idea how much Snoke actually added to Kylo Ren's training. Again, thanks to the terrible writing of the sequels, I just have no idea whatsoever if Snoke was a good teacher or not, or heck, I have no idea what Snoke even was, to be Anne Frank, because there was that one scene in Rise of Skywalker with those weird Snoke clone things, so don't even get me started on that. It's one of those situations where I wouldn't want him to be my mentor solely because I have no idea what I'm in for. Anyway, now on to the final teacher in this video, and the worst teacher that you could possibly have in all of Star Wars. And it's none other than Darth Sidious himself. Now hey, Sidious would be a great teacher to learn skills from. He could teach you how to use the dark side of the force probably better than anyone, and he certainly knows his way around a lightsaber. So you may be asking, why is he the worst mentor to have in all of Star Wars? And if you want the answer, all you have to do is look at his former apprentices. Darth Maul, punished and tortured for literally existing. Count Dooku, essentially killed by Palpatine in favor of a new apprentice. Even Darth Vader, Sidious literally planned to replace with Luke Skywalker, and he actually specially designed Vader's suit to be vulnerable to Force Lightning in case Sidious ever needed to kill Vader lickety split. And that's the problem with Sidious. He would turn on you faster than a pit bull named Fifi or Cupcake would turn on a three-year-old child. He does not care. He's so power hungry that the chance of you having a long life while under his teaching is incredibly slim. However, this is also the reason 
reason that Sidious is such an incredible villain. And actually, speaking of villains, you need to check out this video right here, where I ranked every villain in Star Wars from the absolute worst to the absolute best. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.